With this run being requested every single week, and Mirror Dungeon 2 slowly departing, Spice Bushy sank. We grab a very unusual team of LCB Dawn for more Pierce damage, Chef Gregor and Ryoshu as our much needed healing options, and Molar Otis that allows us to skip entire turn worth of setup by making skill 3 into skill 2 a consistent AoE combo. Now, I'll quickly go over a reason why I changed the starting team as much as I did. Given that it has not happened before, where we do not have the usual damage resistance ups. In short, with how pitiful Spice Bush Isang's health is, we cannot really afford to take any hits. So healing however little we can is our only hope, and grabbing full team that contains lust allows us to start off with it being fueled from the get-go. With that out of the way, Spice Bushy sank. Given that it was requested by someone else being on Discord, comments, or through a pigeon slamming its head into my window, people obviously wanted to see it, and let me preface it with... Do not do this run, ignoring the fact that you won't be able to soon anyway because we lose Mirror Dungeon 2. It might look fun when you edit out all the restarts, but it's really, really boring, since for a lot of fights, you just kinda restart till you get skill 3 into skill 2. Which, trust me, it is painfully tedious. Now, through his skills... Skill 1, Sprouting Buds, is a free coin gluttony pierce attack that inflicts laughable amount of sinking and some self tremor. Generally, not that useful for this run. Skill 2, Moments Floral Breeze, our bread and butter is a free coin sloth blunt attack that gains AoE if we had enough tremor to spend at the start of the turn which also thanks to our passive deals 30% more damage as we do attack multiple targets. Skill 3, Blood Steeped Scent, is a free coin pride pierce attack that is our main tool to keep self tremor consistently up for the floral breeze. It does have the sinking deluge gimmick, but it won't really do much for us during this run. His defensive skill is a decently rolling evade, which will be nice on some abnormality fights, as evade does not work at all for human fights. All of his skills do inflict some sinking, but outside of specific ego gifts, that fact is really negligible. But with that out of the way, let's catch up to the run as it is going. Through floor 1, our first fight rewarded us with Melted Spring, which instantly has set the run for success, as all enemies inflicted with sinking will have their offense and defense level reduced. Right after that we got a really nice event with Late Bloomer's Tattoo as a reward, making our turn 1 even scarier when we commit into resetting for Bloodsteeped Scent as it will increase our offense and defense level by a solid 6 total. With a few extra battles we got to the easiest boss of floor 1 and we were rewarded with today's expression, furtherly boosting the damage of our floral breeze. Our first shop had really unimpressive selections of ego gifts, so I decided to skip them and use our limited amount of costs to recruit Tink Tang Hong Lu for extra 20% damage, LCB Mersold for 10% more damage reduction, as well as LCB Heathcliff for additional 10% damage on Floral Breeze. We started off Floor 2 with Barbed Snare event and a Pekatula fight shortly after, but with our evade stalling couple of turns, we eventually unleash our AoE Floral Breeze and finish all of them to get Helterfly's Dream. Floor 2 boss ended up being Pink Shoes, and between the fact that this boss itself is weak to Pierce, and that it is a weak boss in general, we ended rather quickly. With our selection of rewards being rather underwhelming, I decided to choose Little and To Be Naughty Plushy for a possible synergies in the future 
for some situational damage reduction if other gifts aligned. As we arrive to a rest spot healthy, I have a freedom to recruit more sinners for passives, which end up being 7 Faust for a little bit extra damage from Barbed Snare, as well as to potentially combo with Talismans from Red Sheet Sinclair. Additionally, I just added LCB Ishi for situational plus one clash power in a pinch. As we begin going through floor 3, we start off with another Picatula node, granting us Skeletal Cramps, which gives actual consistent damage reduction from sinking targets. Immediately after, we are led into an event node with Voracious Hammer as a reward, we proceeded with a solid 1-2 punch against Encorp node, quickly taking care of them, and get presented with yet another event node. This time we get Wound Claret, and as much as I wish we could use it for some bleed, I am not changing to 4th match flame. And with that, Floor 3 boss is in front of us, and it is Inquisitor Duo. As per usual, we want to make sure that everything there of an Inquisitor is being hit every turn to keep their instincts low, while the beast is not hit too much unless we can fully commit into killing it. The only real issue was our Floral Breeze sometimes trapping us into activating everything there of an Inquisitor counter, which made for some awkward turns where we have to play around it, because for some reason you cannot offset a counter with your defensive skill. You can offset any other defensive skill. Offset text appears when you clash your defensive skill with a counter, but it does nothing. And yes, I am still mad about it. But other than that, the fight was shrimple, and we were rewarded with grimy iron steak, making our egos activate previously picked up Bad Wolf Plushie. Floor 4 had a magnificent start. Our shop had Blue Zippo Lighter, which will pretty much guarantee us reliable drifting with Sun Shower, as well as some extra Rapture application via standard duty battery. And to make the deal even sweeter, or leaf fuck. Well, at least we don't have to fight anything bad. Imagine how funny it would be. If failing one of those just made you fight the abnormality tied to it. I do hope New Mirror Dungeon gives us more dangerous event nodes, or at least makes some event nodes more threatening on higher difficulties. But with our one and only human fight out of the way, Lore 4 has been nothing but failure. Well, ignoring that really good shop. As we fight through two extra Pecatula nodes, without a single reward, and as we do, we reach Floor 4 Boss. KQE, the final Mirror Dungeon 2 hard mode. Lore 4 Boss, I'll be showing on the channel before it's gone. The fight is alright on Spicebush, as we can utilize his high rolling debate to pretty much remove his mechanic of captivating us for three turns. We utilize Sun Shower and Wishing Kern to set up for high damage turns and make quick work of it while keeping high protection. And as it is going on, I want to say it's been a blast doing this so far. And as hopeful as I am, I'm also afraid of the new Mirror Dungeon coming up soon. Obviously, as most of you know me by now, I will try to solo it with as many IDs as I can. Since this is what's fun to me. I recently managed to solo entirety of Canto 5 with only one X reward missing, and you can watch those on my VODs if you miss the live streams. But with this being Final Mirror Dungeon 2 hard, I just want to say thank you for watching this far. I am beyond happy that people actually do enjoy my little content. I started as an archive for myself. It became much bigger than I ever expected, and as it continues to grow, I hope you stay on. I'll be streaming my Mirror Dungeon of the Lake experience and Starlight Farming on this Thursday, if you watch a few hours before the update drops, 
on 2 p.m. GMT. Hope to see you there. If you enjoy my content, please be sure to like, comment and subscribe, as it does help with algorithm and makes juices in my brain happy. But as we pierce through KQE Floor 5 is open before us, but not until we pick up our reward in form of the beloved run-winning Greycoat. We match it up immediately with Broken Revolver, since we apply Rapture quite reliably now, and move forth onto final floor after healing Heesang and recruiting LCB Rodia for 20% more damage, alongside Zwei Sinclair for our missing damage reduction. As it usually goes, floor 5 will be very quick, so we grab Fiery down from a Pekatula fight, which will do pretty much nothing for us. Right after we get special contract from an event node, we rush through grabbing Child within a flask and cigarette holder, before reaching our final shop, containing great sinking support in form of Midwinter's Nightmare. With that done, it's been a great journey so far. Mirror of Mirrors is no more, and I hope that you enjoy.